All right, something up, fuckers? I'm not starting with an empty project this time. I already have a little tiny project set up. So basically, we have three uh, nodes called player. They all have mission instances. They have collision, all that fun stuff. The script is right here. It was auto generated by Godot. That's the least important part of this video. And we also have this node that's right here. This one is an instance, so that way we can show that when we change the thing's type, it will also bring over this variable too. So changing the type, basically, how the logic is going to go, is that we're going to um, we're going to want to uh, get our node, select it, press the key that's right here, and ch select one of these, and then it'll change the type to whatever we want. So we would have wanted to change it to rigid body, but as of now, it's not doing anything. All it's doing is just printing that we want to change the player character body to rigid body. Okay. So let's go into the change type thing. So uh, we we got this basically. We it's an editor plugin. It's already across the whole project. So plugins, it's enabled. Change type. That's what it's called. And then we have an auto load thing. That's a singleton. That's a tool, and it will we'll use it to call like our change type function, which will be in here. So that way we don't have to. I don't feel like this uh, script should know about the change type function. It should just call utils change type. So that way we could also use change type in other places too, in case we ever want to run it in other scripts. Okay. So yeah, extends error plugin. We have a nodes that's an empty array at first and options that's a type of control that we set to null. Later on, we're gonna instantiate an option scene that we have here, which is an instance. And it has an option button that's right here. Basically the, the options has a the option button in the middle as character by 3D is one of the options, rigid by 3D, and then cancel, which is uh, just ID of 99, this is large. And uh, so that way we could just like give it a BS ID, let's say 999. And um, yeah, and it stops the mouse and waits until the player selects something or else they can't select anything in the editor. And uh, F7 key will still keep working, but it'll only uh, perform this if the node's size is zero and the options is null. And uh, but yeah, so it's gonna wait until we clear the nodes down here and free options and set it to null, so that way we could run it again. So it will only like uh, delete itself basically if we've selected the option button. Okay. So yeah, that's what's going on here. Basically, we get the node uh, option button. We connect the item selected signal, which is right here. I'll show you. And it gives an index, and uh, yeah, so the signal item selected select type is a function we're using and we're using connect deferred since we're using a tool and um, yeah down here the first thing we do is we check if the options is null if it's uh, basically we want to make sure that we instantiated and add as a child and if it's uh, if it's null then uh, we're just going to print an error because we do not want this to be null it should not be null at this point but if nodes that size is zero somehow that's not really an error we could just return basically. And actually we should probably do this. Even though it is not an error, we should still free the options. And uh, yeah, so, or we could actually just, yeah, pretty much it, oh, it just won't go through. So maybe this is actually a pointless thing to check because this for loop is basically a check. If nodes is zero, is size zero, we're just gonna like not go through the for loop and just do all this stuff right here. Okay. So that way we don't have multiple spots where we have to clear everything. All right, so like um, if everything's good, if we have a mo one or more nodes that are selected, we're gonna go through this for loop and we're gonna see if the index is matched something. So if the index is zero, then we're gonna wanna change the nodes type to a character body 3D. If it's one, we're gonna wanna change the nodes type to a rigid body 3D. And so here's a function, we have a node, and then we have the new node on the right. So basically, um, this is how we're gonna wanna use it. So we're gonna to wanna to set, this is gonna be the old node. This will be the new node. And uh, when we pass in the old node, we're gonna to wanna to transfer everything that it has, including ownership, its parent, and uh, its children, and its properties all over to the new node. We wanna transfer it and then delete the node afterwards so that we won't, have, we won't keep duplicating nodes in the scene tree. Okay, so um, yeah, so with all that, we, uh, we're gonna wanna call that function that's called utils.changeType and we're gonna wanna change the node uh, to a character body 3D 
and say dot new and just pass that into the function. This technically returns the this function that's new. So we could actually give it to a variable, but I'm not going to do it here because there's really no point. Because it's useful to have it given to a variable. Let's say character by 3D and just like um, give it to that. Because then like if we want to make more changes afterwards, that will be very handy. But right here, we're not going to have to make more changes. This is the script is only called change type. But, uh, but yeah. So then we also have this one, which we want to set to rigid body, and that will be it. And that's how we're going to call the types. And but before this, we're going to also want to make sure that the node, uh, wait, not a node is character body 3D. The reasoning for this is because if it is a character body 3D, this this script, this uh, function is not going to bring over the script because it's expecting that we're changing the node's type. And uh, what's going to happen is we're just going to want to like ch check if it's not that already and just go through and change the type here. Okay, so let's uh, do something similar over here. Boom, 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 boom. And then that's the same thing for rigid body. So we're just making sure that the it's not the same type and then we just change it if it is a different type. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. And yeah, right here, we're just going to return the new node. So basically right now we're not doing anything. We're not transferring ownership at all. So here's where we're going to start off. First we're going to get the node's parent, get parent, and then add a child to that parent, which is going to be the new node, and boom. So basically we're, uh, we're getting the, nodes, the old node's parent and giving the new node under that one so that way it actually gets added to the scene tree. It, like where the new node is, where the old node was in the scene tree. Next, we're going to want to get the new node and set the ownership of that to the old node's ownership. So whoever the wh whoever was the owner of the old node, set the set the new node new node's owner to that owner, basically. So that the whoever is owning the new the old node will own the new one. Okay. So now we're going to go through a for loop of all the properties because we're going to want to bring all the properties over. I'll put some comments right here. Bring over properties and then afterwards we're going to want to bring over children and then bring file name, file, yeah, file name, name and delete old node. So those will be like three steps that we're doing right now. So for prop in node dot get property list, let's just do a pass for now because I, I want to show you guys a property list. So this returns an array of dictionaries. We have it, it gives us name, class name, the type of, the, of a property, hint, hint string, and usage. So technically we could check we ch could check the node's type as well if you want to be more safe. But for this video, we're just only going to check the node's name. And uh, let's go through here. So we're going to check this. If um, new node.get prop, and let's pass in the name to that prop, is not equal to null, then we're going to um, we're going to say new node.set prop name and pass in it and give it the uh, the old node's property name. Whoops, I meant to put dot get prop name. Okay, so what's happening right here is we're gonna go through all the properties of the old node and then um, check if the new node has those properties with this uh, if statement. We're saying we're getting the property name and then checking if that node has it because if it doesn't have it, it'll be null. If it's not null, that means it does. And then we'll go through here and we'll say set that or set whatever that uh, that property is to the old node's property. So that's what's happening right here. We're just transferring over all the properties. And uh, now we're going to want to go through all the children and do something similar. So for child in node.get children, and let's just go through here. And um, first thing we're going to do is so we're going to say var new child is equal to uh, child dot duplicate 
and I'm gonna bring over seven. So what this duplicate function is doing is it has a bunch of flags that are basically a bit mask. If you don't know what a bit mask is, here's a good little picture right here. So uh, we have some flags that's right here under duplicate flags and you can kind of see it. So if we have one, this will be to the power of zero. If that one's activated, which is right here to the power of zero, then um, basically with this, that means that we'll bring over the signals. We'll duplicate the signals. If we give it three, that means both to the power of zero and to the power of one will be activated. And that way we'll bring over both the groups and signals. If we just gave it a two, like which is right here, then we're, we're bringing over the groups, but not the signals. What we want to do is we want to bring over all these three right here, the scripts, groups, and signals. So that way we duplicate all that. We don't need to duplicate the instantiation part. So I'm just not going to do that. So I'm going to have this turned off. So I'm going to pass in seven right here, which means that to the power of zero, to the power of one, and to the power of two, they're all turned on. But the third, the last bit is turned off. Bit three is turned off, basically. So that's what's happening right there. So when we go back to this, that's why I'm passing in the seven. And uh, yeah, so that'll just make sure that we're like, we have the three, three of the flags turned on, but not the last one. Okay, so new node, we're gonna pass in dot add child and pass in the new child. So now we're, um, we're basically uh, bringing over that, so we've gotten the child from the old node, basically, um, with all the stuff duplicated, and then we're gonna add that to the new node as a, as a new child. And then afterwards, we're gonna get the new child and set the owner to whatever is the owner of the new node. That owner. So that way they all have the same owner. We could also just set node owner. That'd be the same thing, but I like to set new node owner. Okay. I think I've had some issues with just using node in the past, so I'm just gonna keep it to new node. Okay. So now we have uh, all the properties and all the children being brought over, but we haven't deleted the old node yet. But there's still a couple things we wanna grab that we have not actually grabbed yet. So let's go, now I'm at A, of type string is equal to node dot name and var file name of type oh, type string is equal to node dot uh, file scene file path and let's get this let's say uh, node dot q free now that we have all the information so we've already gotten all the no old nodes properties and all the old, old, old nodes children and we've gotten its name and file path. So now we're going to also want to bring over those two to the new node. And it should actually be under that comment. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's bring that over. Okay, so now we uh, now we want to set the new node dot name equal to name and a new node dot file scene file path is equal to the uh, file name. So now we brought over everything that we need. So right now this is all set up. We're changing the nodes type just fine, calling this. And then, uh, so let's test it out in the scene tree. So here is where this is useful. We could either set one at a time where we just do this, just like usual, and then change it to a rigid body 3D. And what's happened, you can already see, it changed it to player four. So it didn't like, it did um, get uh, freed a little strangely. So like probably like the Q free may have lasted too long. I like to use Q-free just to be safe because like honestly the name doesn't matter that much. As long as everything is brought over, I'm completely fine. And uh, yeah, right here. So if we just change this to free, it probably wouldn't change the name. Let's just see if it like messes it up. So let's, uh, let's we can't undo, let's duplicate some players so that we can test them more. Okay. So now, let's try to test it with a new script. So yeah, it still kept the name. So if you just use free instead of uh, Q free, it'll actually keep the name of the old one. But if you want to use Q free just to be safe, just so it never crashes, you could also do that if you don't care about the names naming. Okay, so here's what's cool about this. So having it as a script now, this would take a while to do. Let's say if you had a hundred nodes that you want to change the type of. 
it would suck if you had to go through this and keep changing the type through here. Instead, what we could do, we could select these, like a bunch of nodes, however many nodes we want, press F7, and then change all their types all at once. Then it changes them um, all to the um, rigid body nodes. And we've changed the type, and even if we exit out of the scene, they'll still be in there. It's a level, so they're all still in there. So if we didn't bring it over correctly, if we didn't transfer over the ownership correctly, they would be missing children or they would be missing entirely. We would just see them for a little bit and as soon as we exit out of the scene, they're gonna be gone. But yeah, so now we've changed them all. So we could also change them back to character body 3Ds very easily too. So we could just keep changing the type over and over again as long as like it's not character body 3D. So, uh, but yeah, so we could also change them back to that. And of course, if we want to change them all back to, we are like, oh no, we accidentally changed all them all to the type I don't want. This is all, it's also very easy to change them all back. So, uh, yeah. So that's what's very useful about doing it through GD script instead of the editor um, UI. I think, I, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this in Godot 4, because I'm still new to Godot 4. So if anyone knows, like, uh, if there's already like a built-in function that does the same thing, then I would rather use that, but yeah. But just for here, this will get you to be able to change types very easily. And uh, since this is in like a, a singleton, I could use this anywhere throughout my project. So it's very nice. Well, I hope this helps and have a good motherfucking day.